Emerald Robinson, and in this What Is video, we're going to investigate the state of matter called plasma. Plasma is the state of matter that consists of a mass of free electrons and positively charged particles called cations mixed together. Plasma has neither a specific shape nor a consistent volume. In other words, plasma can easily flow into and take the shape of a container and will expand, redistributing itself to evenly fill that container. Although the properties of plasma are similar to those of gases, plasma and gases are not the same thing. In plasma, electrons are released from their orbits around a nucleus, creating a soup of free electrons and nuclei. Because these charged particles are loose, plasma easily conducts electricity and both produces and responds to magnetic fields. Plasma is created when a gas is either exposed to a high temperature or when high voltage electricity is passed through it. The heat or electricity makes the atoms in the gas move so quickly and collide so violently with one another that electrons are knocked from their orbits. Because of the way they are created, plasmas are sometimes called ionized gases. Although plasma isn't discussed as often as solids, liquids, and gases, and was the last phase of matter discovered, you're probably more familiar with plasma than you think. Plasma gives neon and fluorescent lights their glow, is formed during lightning strikes, and of course is present in plasma televisions. Can this also classify fire as a plasma? Plasma makes up our sun and is visible in the solar flares that erupt from its surface. Because plasma is the stuff of stars, it is the most common state of matter, making up about 99% of the observable universe. For thousands of how-to and advice videos on any topic, visit monkeysee.com. A gas is where you have molecules or atoms separated, moving around in free space. Forces between them are fairly low, so that's why they can move around. And a plasma is when they get a little bit more energy and the electrons are removed from some of the atoms. And so they become what's called ionized. So they have a charge. So a plasma is where the gas exists as a collection of electrons and uh, atoms which are positively charged. A plasma looks identically to a gas. At room temperatures, you can't tell the difference unless you've got an instrument which will tell you whether the particles are charged or not. As you heat the plasma up, it starts to act a bit differently, like an ionized gas. And if you heat it up enough, it acts a little bit like the sun. If you heat a gas up sufficiently hot enough, then the electrons will have enough energy to escape individual atoms. If you apply radio frequencies or bombard them with other particles, you can also strip the electrons off atoms and produce a plasma. Solid, liquid, gas and plasma. So plasma is, is often the, called the fourth state of matter. So if I were to ask you, what was the hottest thing in the universe, what would you pick? I know, I know. You'd pick me, right? No, no, I understand. I, I get that a lot. Cut. What? Done. We've talked about this. If we want to talk about hot things, perhaps the best place to start is with the familiar. Perhaps the first thing you thought of was fire, which is, without a doubt, hot. However, an ordinary fire, which has a temperature of 1 or 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, isn't even competitive in a hot contest. So what's hotter than a familiar fire? Well, there's the blowtorch, which is about twice as hot as a campfire. But even a torch isn't competitive in a contest for the hottest thing in the universe. For instance, the surface of the sun is twice as hot as a typical torch, and the center of the sun is 3,000 times hotter than that, weighing in at 16 million degrees centigrade. And even that incredible temperature is eclipsed by the technologies employed by my colleagues and me to study the laws of nature. Using huge particle accelerators, we can smash beams of subatomic particles together at near the speed of light and generate temperatures a million times hotter than the center of the sun. We particle physicists do have the coolest toys. Well, hottest, but, but you know what I mean. A really interesting thing to think about is what happens to ordinary matter when it encounters temperatures like these. 
To understand that, we can remember some familiar phenomena and then learn about some more exotic things that you might not have heard about before. To begin with, we know about the states of matter that we learned about in school, specifically solid, liquid, and gas. Of course, things are solid when they're cold, gaseous when they're hot, and liquid when they're in between. So how does temperature affect the structure of matter? To understand that, we need to think both molecularly and atomically. In solids, molecules are moving very slowly, slow enough that the forces between molecules are strong enough to hold them in place. In liquids, the molecules have much more energy and the interactions between molecules remain but dominate less. This leads to phenomena like viscosity. When matter is heated even more, the interaction between molecules becomes negligible and matter turns into a gas with molecules bouncing around randomly. So, until now, I've described things that you learned about in school. But it turns out that there are states of matter beyond the familiar three. So what happens if we take a gas and turn the heat up even more? To understand this, we can zoom in on a single molecule and see what happens. At a certain temperature, the energy is enough to rip molecules apart into their constituent atoms. If one raises the temperature even more, the nucleus of an atom can no longer hold on to the electrons, and the result is that you have electrons running around willy-nilly, unbound to an atom. The nuclei might initially hold on to some of its electrons, but eventually, the temperature will be so high that what you have are electrons and bare atomic nuclei running around. The temperature at which these stages occur depends on the molecules and atoms under consideration, but what I've described here is generally true of all matter. When matter is heated enough that the electrons are being pulled off the atoms, this is a new state of matter called a plasma. You've seen plasma in fluorescent light bulbs, lightning bolts, and in those cool plasma balls. The temperature of the plasma in lightning bolts can be 10 times higher than what occurs in a blowtorch. Creating an entirely different new state of matter is pretty amazing, but we're not done. Let's raise the temperature even more. To see what happens then, we need to turn our attention to the atomic nucleus. As the temperature increases, the nuclei have so much energy they can no longer reliably hold the protons and neutrons together. But even that amazing achievement isn't the final word. In order to simplify the language, we use the word nucleon to describe both protons and neutrons. This is because they're both inside the nucleus of an atom. Nucleons are each made of three particles called quarks, and the quarks are held very strongly indeed. In fact, under ordinary conditions, one cannot pull a quark out of a nucleon. However, the temperatures we can achieve in particle accelerators are anything but ordinary. If we heat matter enough, we can literally melt the nucleons and have the quarks and a particle of force called the gluon run around no longer bound together. This outrageous state of affairs is a new form of matter called a quark-gluon plasma. I'll say that again. A quark-gluon plasma occurs when the temperature is so high that individual protons and neutrons literally melt. So you may be wondering if a quark-gluon plasma is a real thing or just an idea. It turns out that scientists can create quark-gluon plasmas at specialized particle accelerators. At the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider on Long Island, also called RIC, and the Large Hadron Collider in Europe, also called the LHC, physicists shoot bare atomic nuclei at one another like shooting two bullets together. The temperature in these impacts was last common in the universe a millionth of a second after the Big Bang. We see here a simulation of the collision at the LHC in which two nuclei of lead are slammed together and a quark-gluon plasma is formed. Physicists generate collisions like these about one month each year. The study of quark-gluon plasma is still a relatively new science, but scientists at RIC and the LHC are studying their data, and it is guaranteed that the next few years will teach us something very interesting about this hottest state of matter. And that is totally cool.